Welcome to Health Vision, WOUB's program on medicine and health. I'm your host, Jackie Wolf, Associate Professor of Social Medicine at Ohio University. Today's show is the second of a two-part series on diabetes. Last week, we defined diabetes and discussed its causes. Today, we're talking about treatment. Joining us are Dr. Frank Schwartz, Director of the Diabetes Center, and Dr. Karen Remsberg, Assistant Professor of Epidemiology, both from Ohio University. Thanks, both of you, for coming back and talking to us. Mm -hmm. Frank, let's talk about the management of type 1 diabetes. But first, very briefly, let's, let's review what type 1 diabetes is. That is when the insulin-producing cells of your pancreas have been destroyed. Correct. And therefore... You're totally dependent on insulin injections in order to maintain your blood sugars. And so a person with type 1 diabetes has to either take multiple injections of insulin a day or wear an insulin pump. It, and these systems are o what we call open loop. There are no artificial pancreases yet. And I know there's lots of hope for stem cell tra and islet cell transplants and things like that. But currently, you have to monitor your blood sugars four to six, eight times a day by finger stick, and then adjust your insulin dosage dependent on what you're going to eat, how, what your physical activity is going to be, the amount of stress that you're under. So it's a very in labor intensive Job. And when you're talking about the pinprick and actually testing your blood glucose levels, is there some kind of machine? I mean, what do you do when you get that little pinprick? And right. There are little strips that have a chemical reagent on it that when the glucose, when the blood, when the serum is touched on it, it causes a cholera reaction based on the sugar concentration in the blood. And so there are meters that record that. And these meters are very sophisticated now. They have uh, memory. They can store. They're linked to databases. So you can have computer databases which compile your blood sugars according to a time of day, day of the month. You can download them to a computer. You can email them to your doctor. And so the data management of, of the diabetes is really very sophisticated. Karen, type 2 diabetes. Describe for us briefly what type 2 diabetes is and how that is managed. Type 2 diabetes is when the insulin, you still have insulin produced by the pancreas, but it's not as effective. Either there's not as much insulin produced or the insulin that is produced won't work with the blood glucose to metabolize it. Um, so the treatment for that, sometimes type 2 diabetics will need to take insulin, but, but most of the time it's diet and exercise lifestyle type. And most don't then. Most don't need insulin. Right. Most type right. 2 diabetics do not because the Correct. insulin is there, the body just isn't using it properly. Correct. So how is type 2 diabetes managed if it's not managed by insulin? There are different medications that uh, type 2 diabetics will take um, that help make the insulin more effective as well as um, watching their food intake and exercise levels. Can you describe some of those medications for us, Frank? Okay. Well, if, if you remember the people who were watching last week, but there are two basic problems with type 2 diabetes. One is the insulin doesn't work like it should, which we define as insulin resistance. And then secondly, the thermostat in the pancreas doesn't release insulin on demand for meals. And so we try to use different medications that help that. So we have classes of medicines that help the insulin work better. Metformin or glucophage was one of the first. The other drugs that work that way are the TZDs, that's Actos and Avandia. These drugs make your insulin work better. So the amount of insulin you're secreting by your pancreas helps maintain your blood sugar to a better level. We also have medicines that stimulate the pancreas to release insulin. They're the sulfonylureas like micronase, uh, uh, gliburide, glucotrol, amaryl. There are newer drugs that work very rapidly like Starlix and Prandin. And then there are actually drugs that delay the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates from the intestine to reduce the pressure on the pancreas. Uh, so those are the major ones. And now there's a whole new set of drugs that have just released this year called incretins. And incretins are intestinally derived hormones that we normally release that amplify our ability to release insulin from a meal. And they also delay the emptying of the stomach. And the, the one that 
many people may be familiar with now is a drug called Bieta. And that's a drug you take by injection that it actually makes your pancreas release insulin better. Can you manage type 2 diabetes without these drugs? Yes, you can. If you really adopt an intensive lifestyle and exercise program, you can reverse the diabetes. In fact, you know, probably the extreme example that reverse type two diabetes, is we should type emphasize, two, is gastric bypass. Patients who undergo bariatric surgery and lose 60, 80 to 100 pounds, there are studies in Europe and now in the United States that show that those patients who were diabetic, the diabetes is cured with the loss of that weight. So that shows you how much the obesity and the chemicals being produced by those fat cells interfere with the action of insulin. And certainly you can control your weight. Many people can without surgery. Yes, I'm not, I was just using that as an as extreme it, example. But you know, patients who really adopt a, a healthy lifestyle with the goal of exercising 50 to 60 minutes a day, five to six days a week, and losing weight by eating a lower carbohydrate, lower calorie diet can control it that way. Let's listen to what Chip Rogers has to say about learning that he has type 2 diabetes and how he learned to control the disease. When, when I was diagnosed and the doctor told me uh, what my blood sugar level was, which happened to be 285 at the time, I felt like someone had slapped me in the face. Well, after I found out that I had diabetes, the, the doctor said he wanted me to do a stress test, go to an ophthalmologist, uh, see a dietitian. I had to go through uh, the bloods and urines test to find out if I was passing protein, um, and I did a whole regimen. The dietitian was the most surprising because my wife and I both went, and Terry said, my wife, I'm going to go with you and I'm going to write down everything the dietitian says. So we went in and sat down, and uh, the dietitian, my wife, said, Terry, Terry said, uh, um, What are the rules? And the dietitian said there are none. Uh, what you need to do is figure out what you need to eat. You have to keep it within a calorie level. And we walked out of there rather stunned. Now that's really interesting because I'm sure that many people think that uh, things have to change incredibly dr drastically about what they eat. And then Chip is saying, now really there are really no set rules. You just need, what, it, what is it that people need to watch when it comes to diet if they've been diagnosed as a type 2 diabetic? Well, it, what's amazing, what amazed me is portion size. I can remember w one of the first health fairs we had, and we had a dinner, and the dietitian pre prepared a diabetic dinner. And, you know, I got up and I gave this talk and I sat down to eat, and they served me my food, and I, you know, I was like, where's my food, you know? Because America supersizes everything. And so portion size is number one. We have been brainwashed that you have to have double extra, the buffet type meals. And so portion size is important. Components, we have to watch the saturated fats, the amount of fat. Fat is just as dangerous as the carbohydrates because diabetes results in heart disease, vascular disease. And then you have to learn a concept called glycemic index. And that is, when you look at carbohydrates, there are simple carbohydrates, which means they are very easily digested, very easily converted to glucose and absorbed very rapidly. And then there are more complex carbohydrates that are more difficult to absorb. And they raise your blood sugar much more gradually. Well, the glycemic index is how rapidly a particular food will raise the blood sugar. And that's variable from person to person. And so what's really interesting is although you think of a high carbohydrate, high glycemic index food, one patient with type 2 can eat that and their blood sugar doesn't rise, another one doesn't. So the patients have to learn what foods affect their own glucose levels and then reduce the portions. It doesn't mean you can't have them. It means you reduce the, the total volume as much as anything else. 